This is the remains of my boiler, uh, which didn't really go very well purely because it's more like a sieve than a boiler. It's broken. Uh, things work on it. <laughs> Not a lot. I chopped the bottom off uh, in the hopes that I could actually seal it, but this is all corroded so badly I can't seal it. As you can see, that's corroded through on the seam, so there's nothing at all I can do with it. So, because I've got these things that I've got to test and try, obviously, I need a boiler. I'm going to make my own. This is 108mm copper. Um, this is a 250mm piece. Obviously they're end caps. So, the theory behind it is, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be, was it 200mm? I don't fully know what I'm doing with it yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece off there, we'll say probably around about that much, just to have as an end seam to go to the piece that you can see marked on there. So that's going to go up to about there, so I've got to cut that much off. And the same on that side. It's going to be a horizontal boiler, not a vertical one. So what I'm going to have is this which is 35mm. I'm going to have a single 35mm going through the middle, obviously near the bottom. And then I'm going to have some of these which are these 10 or 12mm, can't remember. These are going to go through there as a form of a, uh, not superheater, I don't know. I'm going to have four or five of those at various points at various angles. Um, through the length of the pipe, probably starting from about there. And then the blow lamp will be sitting at that end and then the heat as it goes through, obviously these are going to be filled with water but in theory it should heat the water more efficient that way. So that's the theory behind it. How I'm going to do it yet, I haven't got the faintest idea I've got all the stuff, I've got a whistle, I've got all the fill valves, I've got a pressure valve which I bought. So I've got my pressure relief valve which I've got. I've also got somewhere a pressure gauge which I think is in here. I've got my uh, level glass thing which is going to go obviously on the end. And I've got my pressure gauge which is going to go there. <laughs> I don't know where. Um, that's all I know. Now, I've got, to, I've got to reiterate, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I haven't got a faintest idea. I'm just going by instinct, I suppose. And as always, by the time you watch this video, this is already going to be built. So I'm either going to be publishing the video, in which case it's all gone well, or you'll never see me again. You know those times that you wish you hadn't done something? I can't cut this with a hacksaw because it takes too long, plus which I can't bend over to cut it with a hacksaw. So the only thing I've got is a Dremel. That bit there, where are we? From there to there has just taken 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, why? Why did I do this? I'm done with 4K, it's shit. Uh, I can't edit it properly. I don't know why, it just fails every time. Anyway, I'm building my boiler uh, because this one don't work. As you can see, it's rather old, it's rather knackered. But anyway, I am going to use the whistle. And I'm going to use the thing, valve thing. Oh, if I can. Don't know if I can. Probably not, maybe not, don't know. Anyway, I've got... Uh, where did I put them? I've got a pressure relief valve. Obviously I had to buy one. Now this is quarter inch by 28 TPI, uh, I think it is, threads per inch. The only thing I could find are these things which are actually off a chandelier. <laughs> but it screws on there perfectly. 
So I've modified one of these with my lathe, as in my drill, and a file, and that's going to go somewhere on the top. I'm going to sink it in there. Don't know how far down yet, not that far. So as that can screw into the top, and then I'm going to put an O-ring on there so as it seals it up. And also this is going to be my fill port. Um, now obviously I've got to drill a hole in there. Now I haven't got a centre drill. I don't, I don't believe in centre drills. I just drill a hole. So I've got to drill a hole that big. But unfortunately I haven't got a drill big enough. Yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to do my Dremel again. Uh, the quality of this soldering ain't perfect by a long shot. But it will do the job. It's not silver solder. It's normal 80-40 is it? 60-40. 80-40, tin lead, um, inside ain't the best jobs but that solder does go all the way through, it ain't going to go anywhere and this is only going to be running at a maximum of 60 psi, there's plenty of meat there to keep it um, in place, this is not going to get hot enough anywhere near unless I run it dry to melt that solder, um, I've still got a lot of tidying up to do so Obviously, before I put the other end cap on, I've got to have a pressure relief, which is going to be that. So, I'm going to place that smack bang in the middle. Where better to put it? Pressure relief valve fitted. Uh, it's only done with uh, 6040. I haven't done so silver soldering. I can't, with this, I can't get enough heat. I need a bloody oxyacetylene or a bloody lance of some kind to do it um, it's fitted in there fine for people who are, who are a bit worried I mean it's gone all the way through as well so it's sealed for people who are a bit worried this is only going to be subjected to what 60 psi um, it's not going to be subjected to anything hotter than around about 140 150 degrees so it, it will be fine believe me um, the fire tubes which are going to go in here they're going to be silver soldered because I can I can get enough heat on them uh, I'm not going into the construction of it but I'll you know, I'll show you when I start building that now the next thing I've got to do is cut this one in, down to there um, this isn't going to be the prettiest thing but I've got a trick up my sleeve if I can pull it off properly. <laughs> anyway, that's done. So I've got to go and cut that, and then I can solder it on. Obviously, after I've removed my pressure, uh, my pressure. What's it called? Valve. That's the one. When I said I had to um, turn this thing down um, in my lathe, which is basically a drill. Uh, obviously, it had to fit in there. So what I did. You get some insulating tape or something, wrap it around a drill so as that screws on there nice and tight and then you get it in your drill there and then you get your file and you just fire the drill up and file it down so that piece is flat and it'll fit in there. That's simply what I do, that sort of thing. There's always ways around everything I suppose, well most things there are some things that I could have done with a lathe, but it just takes longer, that's all. Lift it, lift it, lift it, at the top here. That, that far away. This far? Yeah.
Thank you very much for giving our bloody lifesaver. Friggin' hell. Smell a lot of curry. Yeah, I can smell curry. <laughs> That's how you silver solder with two people. So this is the basics of the boiler. End cap, tank, pressure relief valve. And this is what I've just made with Chloe, which is the fire tube, I presume it's called. Now, that is going to go... which way? It's got to go in there first. And so that's going to go down to there, roughly. And then obviously this end's going to be sealed, so the water will be on the outside and the water will also go through the tubes which should heat it a lot quicker and the, the blow lamp side of it which is going to be a blow lamp will go into this side it does work well in theory it works I've put the blow lamp in and it's fine uh, it doesn't go out it's a bit noisy but you know they all are so then what I'm going to do is, obviously I've got to cut the hole for that uh, and then I've got to solder it on there. I can't silver solder it, I just haven't got the heat. I can't do it. I need, I need a bloody furnace of some kind. Um, it's going to have to be 60-40, normal plumbing solder or whatever, I don't know yet. Same as that anyway. So that's that done. Now in addition on the fire side of it, which is this side, because I have cut, I have actually put those slightly off centre so there's a bit more gap there than there is there. Does that make sense? Dunno. Um, I'm going to flat that off, because that was just a rough cut, or I might use the other one, dunno yet. And that's going on the end. like that and I might use that one on that end I don't know yet and then obviously we've got the flue that's going to come out so as you can see there that obviously that end cap's got to go on there that's nice and tight on there and then that is going to sit there so I've got the tube in slightly What about the chimney, Tony? I've designed it wrong. The idea of it was, so I've got more of a gap here for the flame to go in. As in, I could sit that sort of there. And then I was going to have the chimney on the other end. But I haven't got enough room now. So to assemble it, I've got to put that in there, although that needs squaring off now because it's a bit not. It needs rounding off, not squaring off, Tony. It's not quite round anymore. <laughs> so I've got to round that off so that will go in there. And then I'll cut the hole for that on that side. And then once that's in there loosely, I can put that end on and then I can solder it up. Now, a word of warning, and I don't know if I've mentioned this in the previous video, but because I've got to use normal flux, but I found out it's actually combustible. Yes, so I've got a bit of a problem now. If I put that in to seal it up, it's going to blow, it will explode when I'm soldering it. So I'm going to have to put my other holes in. I'm going to have to put the hole in for that. And also the, the blow down valve and all the holes. I'm going to have to put as many holes in as I can, just so it will vent. I'm proud of that. That's come out really nice. I mean it has whipped through, look. Although I could have put the bloody pipes in the middle. <laughs>